Greetings, Truth Seekers Pair. We have a bit of an echo. I feel like a Jane's Addiction concert. Oh, that is fantastic. I do hear your echo, though. <laughs> do, you, do you hear that? I do. Am I echoing to you? You sound perfect. I am perfect, Michael. <laughs> I know you are. Do I still sound like Perry Farrell? <laughs> uh, no. No. Okay, now, now I don't hear it. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, <laughs> I guess we are live. I got a little bit tricked. I, I usually wait for the, uh, for the theme music, and then I do that little spill that you've heard me do. I'm you know. sorry about that, Michael, and to everyone. It's no at, worries. Uh, Revolution Radio, if, if you're here at freedomslips.com, our servers took a hit from some lightning last week. And um, it, it, since then, we've been doing repairs in the sense, up, upgrades more than repairs. Michael, uh, like before, we had our chat room that was... Uh, I don't know the correct terminology, but I believe it was it was sponsored or uh, it was run through a third party. So uh, now the chat room is uh, completely identical to the way it was before, but now it is station owned. Uh, so a lot of these we're making a lot of other changes, um, so we can can control a problem uh, before it gets out of hand. Whereas if there's a problem with the chat, we have to chase people down. If there's a problem with the server hosting and et cetera. So uh, th this, again, people at home, this is what the donations are asked for. Absolutely. This and I that. still think, Joe, that there is a possibility that those lightning strikes are some type of targeted uh, sabotage by some form of counterintelligence group. That's, that's very possible, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, I'm kidding. But um, who knows? I mean, hey, lightning uh, – hey, Lightning is lightning, and it will certainly take a server out. But Joe is right. I mean, that's why we do this. And this is not, this is not a simple endeavor to have a internet radio network with approximately – how many shows do we have, Joe? 80-something? You know what? It, we're, we're right around there, Mike, yeah. That's that's a big deal, and that is not a simple undertaking. So I, I'm only laughing because Joe is laying it on you straight the way it is, and I'm just laughing because <laughs> – Hey, man, this is what it is. This is live radio on the Internet. My name is Michael Parker. My producer is Joe Kiernan, and welcome to Electric Pyramid. This is show 15. It is Thursday, September the 4th here on the West Coast. It is the 5th on the East Coast. And um, let's see, what's going on today? The NFL started. Joan Rivers NFL. died. Um, right. Ebola is exploding. The world's in flames. I'm, I'm going to – I guess Sounds I'm going like to clock out. Thursday. Yeah, I'm going to clock out. <laughs> <laughs> i'm just kidding i'm sorry i feel a little silly tonight um joe how's it going um it, it's fantastic i'm just trying to be as uh as anal retentive as i can be and firm here <laughs> anal retentive uh, and firm hey man everything's going really good everything's good. good uh weather's good kids are back at school uh, september is one of my favorite favorite months of the year i love fall I love I love September and especially where you are too. You have such a moderate, moderate season, uh, moderate year and all. Believe it. Yes, and um, and I'm I'm ready for summer to be over. I like summer, but I mean, and even though I am in California, like you said, and we do have a moderate fall, it's just that's always been my favorite season. I don't know why. It's just I I like the cooler air. I like the uh, the change. I like football coming back on. I like the holidays. I don't know. It's it, it's always a invigorating time of year for me yeah summer summer's great uh I, I think i think summer it was it meant a lot more to me when i uh was being raised in new york because you know that those few good months are uh you remember them all year because ultimately even though it's not winter but four or five months out of the year you're pretty much inside for the most yes. part yes and so um i used to really look forward to summer i still do but not as much as I used to. Uh, it's too hot, you know. It's yeah. it's just a little too hot. It's it's right. It feels like it's a hundred degrees here every day in the summer. And it, after a while, it just kind of grinds me down. It um, does. You know, and 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 I look forward to the to the cool air because then I can start opening the windows again, oh. turning the AC off a little bit. Get, oh you yeah, know, like just, that, you get the good autumn sunshine, but you still get that yes. nice cool breeze. Yeah, and it, I don't know. I just feel like I can do more because I love summer just like yourself. But after a while, it just kind of begins to beat me down, and I don't have as much energy. So when fall comes around, it's just this culmination of all these various energies. I re I I love it. You get to pull the jeans out, wear jeans yep. again. That's right. 
Yeah, I wear jeans about two months out of the year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not well, one of those tough guys who could uh, really uh, go all year. I can't do it, man. I, uh, I, I don't see the need for it. Right. No, I agree with you. I, I wear jeans a lot, but, um, you know, I, I, I've worked for production companies here in LA. And one thing I can't bring myself to do that I see people do, I just can't go into work in, I mean, if I worked outside, it would be one thing, but I can't go into work where I work inside in shorts and feel okay with it. Maybe that's because I'm from Texas and mm. or, or something, but I just like, I can't, and, and guys do it all the time. And it's like, um, you know, I'll see them go in their edit bay or whatever, and they've got sandals on and, and shorts and it's, I know they're comfortable, but I, I just couldn't, I couldn't do that myself. I don't, mm. I, that's just my thing. I hear you. I feel like I, I need to wear long pants, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. That's, that's I like thing. wearing jeans. You know, I, the only time I don't like wearing jeans is when it's just too damn hot. That's all. Absolutely. That's all. And, uh, I mean, unless I have to show off my manly legs. You know. Well, you know, and that happens That happens occasionally. It's a once a week thing. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I don't like about shorts is, I, I you know, I, I don't want to see rock and roll bands in shorts. With the exception of, uh, you know, Angus Young from ACDC. Mm, and, right. and for a brief moment in time, I could bear some grunge bands in shorts. Right. But by and large, man, it's like, if you're in a rock and roll band, I, I, I don't come out in shorts. But that here again, that's just me. But uh, what else is uh, what else is shaking this week? I know we're going to talk UFOs. Uh, we're going to have uh, Charles Lamoureux on in mm. just moments. And uh, have you been seeing anything in Myrtle Beach in the last few days? No, I have not myself. However, two separate people today uh, that I spoke to in person, you know, in my travels, not friends of mine, just. Uh, people just around town and, uh, these two people at uh, separate places at a separate time, uh, came up to me and said, you know, last night uh, I live in such and such area and, uh, this is what I saw. And they, they both told me the same thing, but they live two, three miles away from each other. And what did they see? Uh, just orange lights. Uh, there was just a, a whole row of them. Um, the first guy said he he only he saw a row of them, but he said he must have caught the very end of it. He mm -hmm. said there were about five or six of them. But wow. the first guy, <clears throat> he said when he first saw it, he said he walked out his back door to take the trash out, and he looked up to the left because a, a, a bright light caught his attention. So he looked up and to the left, and it was a, a bright orange sphere. And he said, but what was wild was, he said, it was like, uh, it, it, there was like 10 of them. Uh, so when he noticed that there was, he said, approximately 10 of them. And the one he saw was closest to him. And the rest were behind it, like all single file. And um, more came on, like uh, three or four more towards him. And they went off, and then he went and he got his wife, and then uh, when he was out there with his wife and his oldest child, uh, it happened two more times. And, and um, that's not that common to hear, but I've definitely heard it from people that uh, I hold good credibility to mm -hmm. in, in regards to uh, this activity and my research here. Is your local media um, even bothering with this anymore, or is it just something where they kind of – thrown up their hands and they don't know what to do with it. Um, I, I don't, I don't know so much as they're throwing up their hands because, uh, they have not done any reports, uh, in the last few months that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. Um, however, because the only reason I ask that is because, you know, you and I speak every week and, um, you know, just in the last several times we've spoken, their lights have, have been seen, and yeah. so, and they're not just being seen by you; they're being seen by other people as well. So, well, you know, that, I, and I worked hard at that per se, um, because it was just me saying, "Hey, I, I saw this," and uh, everyone was, you know, in the beginning, you know, Joe, it's how how are other people not seeing this? And I said, "Man, I know they are. I just don't know how to get a hold of these people." Understood. You know. Um, I mean, I could I could have people talk to everyone I know who saw them, but right. you know, for an investigator, they they don't want that. They want um, 
a little different character, definitely someone you don't know, maybe someone professional, maybe someone who on their daily life or their employment and their position and career, uh, trust is the key to that job. And uh, maybe police officers who are trained for uh, identifying and being observant. Or uh, some of the military gentlemen here, servicemen and women, I should say. Uh, but it's always uh, one gentleman, Richard, I always think of. and um, Richard's retired military service, but his job, he was, he was in the service for 25 years. And for 23 of those years, uh, the second, <laughs> the, the first two years he didn't do this, but his sec- the 23 years to follow, his job was identifying aircraft, whether it be from on land uh, in a tower or on a ship at sea. And uh, this was done uh, with eyeglass, uh, spyglass, binoculars, um, handheld technology, eyeballs, uh, had nothing to do with radar. And uh, we know because he was a trained observer. He was a trained observer. Yeah, Michael. And you know, more importantly is he was he was, and I'm going to say he still is because he's only been retired now for almost three years, but he's still very active in a lot of these things with what he does and he instructs and, but he's not, uh, he's, he's no longer a member of the military. And, uh, but this gentleman, you know, he's, he's, he's collected. He's a big, he's intimidating, big guy, bald guy, you know, shaves his head. Mm-hmm. Big dude, and uh, he's well spoken, and uh, he's he's sure in everything he says. You know, besides the UFOs, he's you know he's a man who speaks with assurity and confidence. And when he tells you, you know, he sees these lights, and he's a little hesitant to do so, even though he already knew who I was. That I have seen lights. I've spoken to many people. I've looked into it, and. Um, he said that in his experience, in his knowledge of aircraft, number one, that's nothing he's ever seen before in regards to identifying the lights. Because right. uh, he's, he's now, when I spoke to him last, he saw them three separate times. But all three were, were similar in a sense, uh, in characteristics and what they did. You know, I tell you, they, when I see them a lot, they light up like, a triangle or a square mm-hmm. or a rectangle. Rectangle is probably the most popular one here, but it's always a perfect rectangle, you know? Amazing. And um, he, he'll tell you that uh, they always do the same thing. And um, the way they move around and disappear and reappear, well, obviously, he, we know nothing that does that, but f- forget about that because they might not be disappearing. They could just have their lights off, mm-hmm. uh, which is possible. Um, but he's referring to identifying uh, the the proximity to the distance of which that light is to him, and um, he's he was able to identify aircraft if he could see it. You know, he was uh, one of the best, and that's why he did it for twenty five years for identifying aircraft with his own eyes, regardless of the nation of origin. You know, it didn't have to be a U.S. plane. You know, more often than not, he's training, you know, from afar. But he says, you know, Joe, there's there's no plane that can do what these things did. Either, he said, either they were turning off and just, uh, and then turning lights back on somewhere else. But, you know, I, I'm with him in the sense that, it first of all, it would all be silent. And like he says, they're very close to him uh, in this, in degree that if it were any type of aircraft, you would hear it. And, uh, and, and I agree, I agree. Even if it's, if people say, you know, that, that light you filmed last night, you know, that's a drone. So, well, you know, even so, like, it looked like I could have threw a rock at the thing and I didn't hear squat, you know? Right. Um, I'm, I'm not ruling out drone. I'm not ruling out weather balloons, the infamous weather balloon. You know, I, I can't rule all this out, but I can honestly say through all of my searches only twice, like when I've seen something or had a report come in and looked looked around here, asked questions, called everyone I needed to. Only two times were was I able to assuredly nail it down, uh, in my opinion, be, not being there, that they were uh, flares. Um, mm-hmm. 
one was part of a show and another one was just a, a whole bunch of Chinese candles. And, um, and that second one I'm going by because of just, um, the location where, where they, where they were seen and where they, the, where they went, how they traveled about because right. these Chinese lanterns, we do see them here. We see them a lot. They sell them sure. at every gas station here. Yeah. Um, uh, but you know, no BS. Uh, my youngest daughter, who's just turned three, she can't help me here, but my older children who are nine and 11, they could, when they see these lights in the sky in an instant, instantaneously, they will be able to tell you if it's going to be an unknown light or a Chinese candle, regardless right. of the difference. Now I understand these colors look very similar in videos, but in real person, they, they might be similar in color, but not in intensity, uh, not, not in its brightness and, and the way the intensity is so constant, Michael, mm -hmm. like it doesn't fade down at all. It doesn't get brighter. It's, it's just constant, like, like metal out of a fire that's right. a blacksmith is going to hammer, you know, just yeah. that glowing orange color. Well, uh, a few years ago, I did a show for uh, Discovery. It never ended up airing, but we were trying to replicate, and this was, God, this was 2008. Um, we were trying to replicate some particular sightings that were uh, recorded in San Diego. And at the time, it was thought that they might have been Chinese lanterns. And we did, we did two sets of tests. And in both cases, it was the same thing you're describing. I mean, you can tell clearly that these are Chinese lanterns because they, they flicker, flicker exactly. and they, they, they blow in a fashion that is – it's obvious they're being carried by the wind mm -hmm. and they move in a certain way, whereas the lights that we were trying to compare them to had a completely different intensity of light. They moved in a far more orderly manner in respect to each other. I still don't know what they were, but they were not Chinese lanterns. And Chinese lanterns, I mean, you can tell what they are. Mm -hmm. So um, we're going to uh, I'm going to bring Mr. Charles Lamaru in here. Please do. Our good friend, Mr. Charles Lamaru. He's been on Researchers on a Mission Radio. He's a good friend of ours. Here at the station and in Facebook, uh, it's so weird saying that Facebook. I'm gonna I'm gonna retract that we're friends on Facebook. We are uh, we're colleagues on Facebook. That sounds good. Yeah, how's that? Colleagues for me. Charles, what's happening, man? Hey, how you doing, Joe? I'm doing excellent. How are things? Good, good evening, Charles. What? Who's that, Michael? This is Michael. Michael Parker. How are you? Hey, wonderful. Long time Thanks for no talk. Thanks yeah. for joining us tonight. Yeah, I think the last time I spoke with you was probably the end of 2013 or the beginning of 2014. I think that we were both on one of Joe's shows at that point. Yeah, it was quite a while ago. I, I got one history here. It was back in May last year, and then I think uh, earlier in the year. That's right. Well, thank you so, for coming on tonight. I appreciate it. Uh, well, thanks for the invite, for sure. Well, so, we're trying I, to get you on, Charles, because... Yeah. Michael and I had been, uh, we were discussing a lot of things regarding the UFOs, but again, we came back to a lot of what you're seeing in that area and more or less even in that, in your whole time zone, because that's completely different than what I experience out here. But, um, we were just talking about your, uh, your upgrades to your camera here, because we remember when you came on my show originally, you, uh, you had you had the quadcopter, but uh, I don't think you had a camera on it yet. Oh no, you, you you didn't have night vision or anything on there. Yeah, yeah, no night vision and uh, no video transmitter. Uh, so that's all done. It's all ready to fly. I did a um, I did a little test uh, the other week. Um, just it was a fireworks display out here in Vancouver, and it went up uh, about four hundred feet up. And video recorded that at night, and it worked out perfectly, except. Um, I'm missing out on a proper night vision camera, so I just went ahead. I'm spending so much money. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a full a full spectrum GoPro. Yes. 
So it still doesn't bring out um, the, the light as, as good as a, as a night vision device, but with a strong illu illuminator I'm going to be attaching to the hexacopter, it'll give me a good distance of about 50 feet. But that's all I really need, just as long as I can see a little bit when I'm flying up there. Because um, what it is, I want to intercept the orbs. And by doing so, a full-spectrum uh, GoPro is perfect for that. And having a 50-feet radius uh, illuminator, uh, it'll be per perfect. So if something's going to come close to my hexacopter, it'll be right on high definition. Charles, when you say, um, this is interesting, when you say you think you might be able to intercept these orbs, so I take that as meaning that you believe that they're not that far off the ground. No, no, I believe they're, I've seen them, the lowest they've come down to is right up to my balcony at 20, 24, 21 stories up. I haven't okay. seen them go any lower than that. Uh, they usually hang around um, probably about, I'd say about four to 500 feet uh, and higher. Um, they do, when they do come in, actually, I have not seen an orb for about two or three months now, uh, which is kind of odd. Um, but they do come in, they come from really high up. I spot them coming in from way up high in the atmosphere, and then they just stop and start cruising just above the highest condos, which are about 50 floors up. And they circle, they go screaming by, and then they'll swoop down, and they'll come close, of course, they're out to my balcony, about the same level, and then they'll stop, hover, and then zip off again. And that's when I get to re get some good recordings. And you're doing primarily most of most of your shooting off of your off of your balcony. Yeah, that's it. On. That's it. I just plug in all my devices through an um, extension cord, put it on my balcony, and uh, even with all the light pollution, you know, night vision is amazing, right? Um, and it can it brings out the stars, it brings out the UFOs. Um, but I've noticed now that you know all the UFOs I'm spotting, they are descending, and I think I I mentioned this in the last time um, going over the Cypress Park area, and that's, um, I went up there the other, oh, geez, last month, and unfortunately it was during the big full moon, super moon event, so mm -hmm. the skies were really too bright at night, so I couldn't spot any of the UFOs. But I'm going back up there again. Um, I was going to do this weekend, but I think there's an event going up up on Cyprus. I think it's one of the SETI groups uh, going up there doing a big meditation event, so I don't think I want to go up there um, because I have a lot of people come around my scope and probably wanting to, you know, watch, which is fine, but I'd like to do this solo. Mm -hmm. I, I get it. get a lot better, um, you know, a lot better, um, uh, how would I say, UFO attention when I'm by myself. Sure. Charles, let me, let me ask you, I, I want to back up a little bit and just talk about you for a moment. Um, yeah. You obviously have been interested in this for quite some time, and I've seen your, your rig on... Uh, on Facebook, so I mean, you are committed. Um, tell me, A, are you originally from Vancouver, and B, how did you get interested in, in shooting the UFOs? Um, no, I'm not originally from Vancouver. I'm okay. from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Okay. I traveled the world in my profession as a nurse at one time. Uh, now I work for a medical company as a consultant, mm -hmm. so I travel still throughout Canada, but uh, I moved to Vancouver a few years back. So I got into UFOs uh, just about three years ago, okay. and I've been into astronomy. You know, I'm very much an astronomy enthusiast for many, many years since I was in my early twenties, and uh, actually even before that. And so I've had numerous telescopes. And three years ago, I happened to be taking, a, you know, getting into astrophotography. Have a nice Canon camera, attach it to my, you know, my LX200 me telescope, and all of a sudden I saw this weird, the uh, you know, diamond-shaped object just floating across the moon. And here I am. I got, my, <laughs> I got my camera connected and everything. And I was in such big awe. I'm watching this thing going by. It took like four seconds across the moon, and I didn't even take a picture. So um, from then on, this is how I really got interested. And I was really a skeptic, really didn't really believe in UFOs. I was always interested, you know, hey, that'd be kind of cool, you know, UFOs. You know, of course, there's probably life somewhere else around this, you know, universe, but... Did I really believe in UFOs? No. Mm -hmm. um, but I've had a lot of weird events happen to me throughout the years that, um, you know, coupled up with that experience, with that object going across the moon. Um, I did a lot of research, and night vision was one of them. YouTube, you know, of course, um, looking at Alice Cruz's uh, videos on YouTube really got my interest. So, of course, you know, because of the experience uh, that I had with that craft or whatever it was going across the moon, I bought myself um, a night vision device. And I started filming. 
and that's basically how it started. And then, not more than a month later, I caught my first amazing orb crossing my uh, balcony. And to this date, you know, three years, almost three years now later, um, nobody knows uh, what it is. Even MUFON videographers, I think they've had like three or four professionals look at it, and they still don't know. That footage, um, because you've got a YouTube page that I'm looking at right now, and and I invite our listeners to check it out. Um, The user is just Charles T. Lamb on, uh, or Charles Lamaru, if you just want to go on YouTube. Is this, is this particular footage that you're discussing right now, is this, where can I see this on your page? Or It's, um, it's right at close, right to the end. I got like a hundred and, hundred and something videos. Okay. It's one of the first few at the beginning, uh, okay. back in 2012. And it's called okay. Amazing Energy Orb. Okay. And, um, it comes in and you'll see stars out of focus. And I, I kind of focused my Yukon Night Ranger, I, I, which I had at the time, but I've, I've, I've changed my uh, night vision devices since. Um, and I've been watching this thing spin around the neighborhood for a couple of nights, and this was the first time it slowed down and just hovered and came right close to my balcony, about 50 feet away. The way I can judge as by looking at the object through the scope, and again, looking through the, my naked eyes, you know, you know, there's a lot of light, you know, from the night, you know, street lights. I couldn't see anything at all in front of me. And I can judge it because it was just hovering all and traveling just above the condo right across from me, which was about 50 feet away. You know, it was just above that, so 50 plus, 60 feet away. And it looks like a plasma ball. It looks like, um, you know, um, exactly, the size of a, of a big volleyball or, uh, sorry, a beach ball. And that's the only thing I can really explain it and it, it traveled by and I caught it really clear for a few seconds and I kept on following it going around the condos and then it took a nice swoop down if you watch the whole video you can barely see it it swoops right down and goes a complete three, uh, 180 around the um, condos and I lost contact with it and then it came around again and I got a couple of videos afterwards showing it speeding around the condos like I'm, I'm talking about traveling at high high speeds like almost impossible to, to follow and you said that this had happened for a couple of evenings prior, and you finally got it on on, yeah. on this particular capture. Yeah, exactly. It's been it was hanging around my balcony. It would come by, it would stop, it would do kind of dancing around. Um, it would cruise from one condo to another, you know, circling a condo. Like I'm talking right on the top floors, around 40, 50 floors high. Mm-hmm. And I'd be fo- I'd be following it for a few nights, and then finally, you know, if it stopped. You know, just about, I'd say, 100, 150 feet away, and I see it stopped, and it starts slowly coming towards me and kind of change direction a little bit so I can, so it's facing me about 50 feet away and passes right by me going really slow, and I get a beautiful video of it uh, for a few seconds. And you look at it, it's, it's producing its own uh, light, and it's infrared light because I didn't see with the naked eye, uh, with my naked eye at all because I looked mm-hmm. at it. You know, and I looked through the scope or my little screen, and there was nothing there. And I looked through the scope or on the little two and a half inch um, screen that I have, and there's that object. So it was producing an infrared light because uh, I was, of course, picking it up with my night vision. What time of so the evening was, was was this happening? Do you remember? What time? Yeah, just I'm just curious. Oh, uh, you know, it, it's it's probably on the video. Um, okay. I don't recall, but it was it was late evening. Okay, um, and and, you know, and my next question is the the other times that you were seeing was 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 it a because I'm just I'm just curious was it a similar time that you were seeing oh, it each time or was it totally random? No, it's always around the same time period. Wow. It's either you know just after sunset. Um, it could happen either before or just after. So if it was summertime or early early or late spring, you know sunset's around ten o'clock p.m. here. So I think it'd been around ten thirty. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's really right now, like for me, just an hour ago, is perfect time to go out to see if to catch some things. I don't know why, but it seems like it's a half an hour, half an hour after sunset. And same thing for sunrise at dawn. Um, I've, I've had some UFO captures if I'm up at 6 o'clock, 6.30 in the morning. Uh, so it's really u- uh, unusual. But again, midnight, 3 o'clock in the morning, I've caught some amazing objects as well. And I was looking at this August 22 um, footage that, that you have on your page as well um this is this is amazing i mean did you have any feeling before going out to shoot or do you do you just do you just 
set up your gear and roll with it. I just set up my gear and roll with it. But the, at the beginning, and back in 2012, no, I had some really weird um, events happen to me. You know, uh, waking up in the middle of the night that I had to go outside and film. And all the way until last year, that occurred to me. This year, I haven't been feeling that at all. Uh, the, one of my favorite uh, videos I caught was at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. It was a saucer-shaped one of, um, that was uh, 2000, September 2013. That one is I woke up in the middle of the night, and I just had to go outside. I took my scopes outside, and uh, as soon as I pointed up in the sky, there was the object. And I had pointed right in that direction. Within 30 seconds, there it is. And I had nothing for about two weeks and that's very unusual, having no captures at all. Like right now, what's happening to me right now, it's been a week, there hasn't been anything. But um, last year, it was the same thing. Two weeks, there's nothing. All of a sudden, I got this saucer shape. I called it a wobbler. And until I zoomed in on it, it, it was spinning, wobbling, and it was saucer shaped, and it had like a hole in the middle. And it's called um, Vancouver Best UFO, I think it's called. I'm not sure. Okay. That was uh, September 2013. Do you yeah. think, um, I think that I'm looking actually at that, um, Vancouver Best UFO re-edit. Is that yeah, the one? That's yeah, okay. So I guess I'm curious. I mean, do you feel like they are communicating with you on, on some level? You know, I, I would say in a you, subtle fashion, I think for sure. And in 2012, I know for sure. And, and even parts of 2013, I could say yes to that. Um, and I, I had some weird, you know, lucid dreams. And, you know, I don't know if it's just, you know, psychological because I'm, I'm filming something very new to me and it's, it's a phenomenon. But, you know, why am I capturing these, you know, on, on specific nights? And sometimes I get up and when I want to take a break, I'm sitting on my couch and I get these bright magnesium um, spheres zooming across the skies and doing zigzags and then disappearing. And I'm going, geez, I want to take a break because I go out every night. Mm -hmm. And this is one night that just last year that happened to me. So I, I think so. I, I definitely think so. But recently, I feel like it's just been detached um, in the last few months. I, I have not felt anything. It's, it's been odd. Um, and, and, it, and it goes to show you that there hasn't really been a lot except for um, in August, um, the, the one object, if you saw my last one on my uh, YouTube channel, I was coming up from the north again from the Cyprus area and it looked like a satellite. I don't know if you saw that one. Yes, the, the, the one, yes, the August 22nd. Yeah. yeah, that's it, yeah. Okay. And then just slows down, then slows down, <laughs> and then almost stops and changes direction. So I have no idea well, what, what that can be other than, you know, unidentified. Uh, object in the sky. It's 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 not a man-made object. It's not a satellite. It's not a plane. It's not a bird. So it's basically going back again to my my usual captures. But this one is a little more unusual than what I used to capture. It was really orange, and I normally don't capture them in in the color orange because I do have a colored night vision device, so it really shows the colors. Most of the time, it's a bright blue because they're really bright, or just a black and white sphere, or completely invisible, um, like um, the energy orb, and it's a plasma-like uh, sub uh, object. Now, this one was orange and yellow, so this is new to me. So I'm capturing just about all different um, types of different UFOs, so maybe it's just a, uh, a new wave of um, um, captures I'm, go I'm going through right now. I don't know. It's very odd. Is there a is there much of a UFO community in Vancouver, or are you in touch with uh, uh fellow watchers at all? Uh, there's a few. Uh, they're not as um, involved as I am. Um, mm -hmm. I think I'm probably the only one that's really, really, really into it uh, in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, with this equipment. Not a lot of people have night vision devices. Um, people go out maybe once in the blue moon, really, literally, super moon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but there is a um, uh, C-SETI group that goes out and they do their meditation. Um, That's not, James not Gillahan's group. Yeah, it's, it's not. He's not. They're not affiliated with him. It's this one individual here in Vancouver that started his own group, and I think he has a group of ten to twenty people. Mm -hmm. And uh, they go out uh, to Cyprus because, of course, they watch my videos. They know that's where I see most of my objects uh, descending and, and ascending. And they usually go up there once a month, but they've never had any good success. Interesting. Um, but I usually get good success. <laughs> what what, well, do you, what, do you, what means anything? 
What do you attribute that to, do you think? I, the I, fact like that I, I they don't it, get anything. No, they don't. Um, a lot of it, it's, it's, you know, people's experiences that they're feeling that they're being touched or they have this. I've been to one of their events and I had a complete, you know, I brought all my night vision devices and, and uh, of course, did the meditation beforehand for about an hour and a half. And then uh, there was um, a couple of satellites going by. And, of course, people were, th- you know, lasering them off and everything. And, of course, I knew they weren't uh, UFOs. And they didn't, they didn't capture anything. But people were experiencing, and I think a lot of it was psychological, that they were being touched by some unknown being. And, and I really, honestly, you know, I never felt any of that. And I've been catching really legit UFOs. And I think if there was any kind of spiritual activity or extraterrestrial activity I think I'd be involved with it as well or at least I would have captured a night vision or something I really don't know if that is very useful what they do right um, I don't go to them anymore because uh, I've never had good success you said something interesting did you say they were lasering off what, what did you oh, mean by that they've had like everybody had a green laser they didn't have night vision devices but they would shoot their lasers at you know, satellites and everything. And, that's something and, uh, I don't do here on the East Coast. That's <laughs> that's an East Coast, West Coast thing. But we've yeah, so, joked about it before. I, I think it's absolutely fantastic and amazing that he's done this. I I have not tried it. Uh, they've, but, but, uh, they've made the laser pointers illegal here in the in the last twelve months. Same here. I mean, you can't you the, can't do that um, here in L.A. I mean, reported that people were. Uh, shining lights up towards the airplanes and helicopters, and apparently it's, it's becoming illegal here too. Yeah. It's it's now gone to a point uh, because oh, the light diffracts when it goes in there from the laser. But I really wanted to try this laser thing out, and um, Charles once again was right there doing it, man. Well, you know, I get good success with it. I use a really high-powered laser, infrared laser, so it's not a green laser, but I do use green lasers as well. I use it very infrequently, only when I'm 100% sure it's not man-made and I'm not in the city, uh, which is rare. So I use my, which is now broken down. It, it, it goes on a fritz. I have to bang it a few times. It's, it's, um, it's a module I bought. I made it, um, and it's an infrared laser. It's very powerful. It, it does go to about 20,000 feet, um, and um, you can't see it with the naked eye at all. But, of course, if it's uh, – sorry? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, when you use the infrared laser, I, I was going to say, are you using it to signal? But what, what, are you, what are you doing with it? Well, initially I did the signal, and I did get a good response a couple of times. And okay. really, it, it wasn't an iridium flare. In one of my videos, you'll see that. Um, I can't remember what it's called, and I really got a good reaction to it. But I do it more now so to, to, to get the distance of it, because I did a couple of tests with it, and... Uh, with my night vision device, I had my brother go out a few hundred feet away, and I pointed my laser, and I looked at it with the, when I hit an object with it, and how big of um, a circle it makes when I hit an object. And from about two or three hundred feet, you know, laser still spreads out. You know, yes. it's not very, you know, it still spreads out to about the size of a basketball, a little bit bigger. And so, for me, when I'm pointing at an object, it get, if I hit a contact point of an object and it's in the atmosphere or if it's close around the balconies, if I see a contact point with my night vision device, then I know it's only a few hundred feet away. So I can make a judgment call and I can get the size of it as well. So one video you can look at is called Orb Games. Um, and I, it, it looks like an insect. It may look like a bat. And I'm following this thing. It is an orb. Sometimes they're completely invisible. They look like a mirage, but I know how, how they look like. And then I hit them with a laser, and then all of a sudden you see a speck of light. And it's they're zooming around. It looks like a bug. And as soon as I hit it, it's the size of a big basketball or, or a, um, a beach ball because it, it shows a big contact point. And again, if you, you look at orb games on my videos, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So for me, that's validation that it's not a bird. It's not an insect. It made a big contact point, so it was a size at least minimum the size of a of a large basketball, and a little bit smaller than a beach ball. So whatever that was, that's the size of it. It, it was it made a big big contact point. Holy so that's God. that's how I use the laser now. I don't use it for making contact with UFOs. I figure if they want to blink at me, they're going to blink at me with a laser or without. Yep, but, and but it does work. 
It does uh, work. I, I, I believe that it works. Um, I, I also, when I was asking you earlier, if you thought that they were perhaps communicating with you on some subtle fashion, if they are, then yes, you don't, you don't need the laser anyway. No, and I stopped, and, and then and they still come around my balcony. Um, again, the only times I, I use it now is when I see an orb. Um, and again, I haven't seen one for a couple of months. Um, I will use the laser to see the distance and see the size of it because they, they vary in size. I've had them from the size of a, of a baseball uh, to the size of a large volley, uh, beach ball, sorry, you know, a big beach ball. You bounce around at uh, concerts. So it's for me, this is how I determine by using that laser. So sometimes I will use it just because I get frustrated too because these guys will just pass by me. I know they're UFOs. They pretend to be satellites, but they're not because uh, I'll see 30 or 40 of them all in the same direction going towards Cyprus, and I want them to come to talk to me. <laughs> well, I want them to come closer so I can get a better film, a video of them. So sometimes I'll get my laser out and I'll just flash them, hopefully that they'll respond or come around again because I haven't seen the orbs for, oh, my gosh, the last one's on my video um, it's, uh, several months ago. So I don't know if that, that's meaningful or they've, they've had their, their fill of Vancouver. But I normally see them when I see the, um, the larger crafts in, in more than just one hovering around the city, you know, coming and changing directions. And then I will see some of these orbs coming closer to the, uh, you know, to the uh, height of the condos. So are they probes? Are they independent from the UFOs? Are they spiritual? I don't know. I have no theories. All that I know that it's a phenomena that it's real. It's not man-made. Um, and I really want to know what they are. I like your approach to it. It's completely reasonable. I, I'm the same way. I, I don't know what they are either. And they may be a combination of many, many different things, which um, – I. I don't know what they are. One thing I wanted to ask you, I've only been to Vancouver once. It's a beautiful city. Um, and you're saying you're seeing a lot of stuff in the direction of Cyprus. What What is in the general area of Cyprus, just out of curiosity? It's a huge um, uh, area. Cyprus Park is, oh, I don't know how many kilometers, um, square miles. It's a ski hill on top there. It's one mm -hmm. of our local ski hills. And um, behind there, it's a huge park area, and it goes all the way to Whistler. I mean, it's, it's huge. And there's lakes. There's old mines. Um, again, I see them pass and descend to that area. They could go another few kilometers inland, uh, or they could be going to Alaska for all that I know of. But they seem to get brighter. Some of them get brighter as they descend towards and over uh, past uh, Cypress Ski Hill. That's the top of the mountain. Yeah. Um, so... Again, there's a lot of lakes. There's a, there's, there is a, um, um, a path that you can go to. There is a, a, a trail that you can take its uh, three-day trek into um, this beautiful lake that's completely isolated. One of these days, I really want to do a nice hike in there and bring all my film gear, bring a, you know, a few people with me and, and camp out there because it's completely isolated. There's not very many people that do this trek because it's, uh, it's quite advanced because you do have to do a little bit of climbing. You don't have to bring ropes or anything like that, but it, it's pretty steep. And um, uh, but there is a trail, and it's um, you know there are signs there, but not a lot of people do it, especially when you go further deep in towards where the lake is. There's a few lakes. It's amazing if you go on Google Earth and hit Cypress Park and just look on the bottom and see the size. It's just it's just humongous. Well, I, yeah, I was curious because the the water aspect of UFOs interests me, and I was wondering. Also, if do you know the the primary makeup of the mountain? Is there a lot of granite there? Is there a lot of crystal or quartz in that mountain, or or do you ever hear any strange stories about the mountain? Are there unusual? Oh, yeah. yeah, there's a hundred years of history of uh, UFO um, uh, sightings in Cyprus. I didn't know about it until someone told me about it. I'm just, I'm just starting to do some research now uh, regarding that whole area. Um, again, a lot has to do, a lot of people are talking about the old mines, gold mines and silver mines in that area. Uh, that might have something to do with it. Um, so there again, are high mineral deposits in those mountains. Oh, big time. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's, um, there's a lot of people still are starting to pan for gold now and, again, as they used to back uh, many, many years ago. And a lot of people are out there with their, with their um, um, independent little gold mine um, um, territories they have. Sure. And um, it's become popular again in this area. So interesting. I, I mean, 
I haven't done a lot of research yet. I, I do more filming than research. Yeah. Um, so again, when winter comes along here, I'm going to do a lot more research because I won't be able to do any filming because we'll just be in one big cloud of rain for the next six months, starting probably in October. Well, I, I commend you for, for the work that you do and how you got into this because um, when you were saying earlier that you were very interested in astronomy most of your life, it's I have a very, very good friend, a very dear friend, total skeptic. Uh, but he's he is a accomplished astronomer, and uh, he's built his own observatory uh, out by San Bernardino. He has uh, a great telescope, and uh, I just wish one day, perhaps it will happen, he will see something that he will not be able to explain, and he will want to approach the subject like you did. Well, you know what, and that's that's a, that's what it's going to take to a lot of these astronomers. I was on a Facebook group that uh, the group of astronomers. And they get really nasty. They're totally yes, they skeptic. They, they will not believe you. They, if they had a UFO land in their backyard and an ET shake their hand, they still wouldn't believe it. So, you know, some of these guys, um, you know, they have to have, you know, something that really independently, you know, it's got to move them because that moved me when I had my first experience. And, you know, the thing about astronomy and telescopes if you're not looking for UFOs and you're looking to stars and you're looking to planets and the Messier group, you know, uh, galaxies and whatnot, nebulas, you won't see UFOs. You will not. It, it was a chance because I was looking at the moon. So I was focusing on a, on a really close satellite, right? So um, telescopes, they're really a tough, tough gig to have because you're, you've got high magnification and these things are small yes. most of the time. You will not see them unless you're looking for them. I will never use my telescope to hunt for UFOs. It's just it's just not um, uh, user friendly for especially when they're coming in the atmosphere and zooming at high speeds. You got to have a good field of view, night vision, because a lot of times they are in the infrared spectrum. And I got many stories that you know I've seen these orbs um, completely like a mirage. It's just a dark spot, and they're hovering just above the balcony. But I can spot them because I've seen them before, and they're just slowly moving. And then I go, and I got one video, and I go, what is that? What is that? And as soon as I hit it with the laser, bing, it hits a big contact point. Again, the size of a volleyball or a beach ball. You know, so it's, it's very, very interesting. So if you're not looking for it, you're never going to see them, especially if you're not, if you're a complete skeptic. Well said. I mean, that absolutely makes sense. And, um, yeah, I... I my friends that that I would my, my friend that I was describing, I would love for him to see something, but it makes sense that you will not probably see it in that fashion. No, you won't. Yeah, you'd have to be extremely lucky. After low magnification, you're looking at the the local, you know, looking at the moon, or uh, even 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 if you're looking at Vega or something. You know, most astronomers won't because it's you know a star, right? You know, unless you're looking at a uh, Andromeda, you know, it's fairly big, big, and you don't have a high mag magnification. You got a good field of view. You might see something zip by, but you know, a lot of the accomplished astronomers, you know, hobbyists, you know, they're they're doing astrophotography and they're looking at um, you know far distant nebulas and and galaxies out way out there, and you're not going to spot a UFO with that. And again, the, the, you know, chances are very, 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 very slim that they will. Understood. Well, I know we're coming up on a break here shortly. Um, before you go, could you offer some advice to anybody who might be listening to the show who would who would like to get into doing what you're doing and hopefully uh, getting some quality UFO captures? What what could a beginner? How could they approach this if if they wanted to do this? What is some good gear that you might suggest or some techniques that you might suggest? Well, for me, the first thing, if, if they're really interested um, and if they're, not, if they're on a budget, you know, any good low um, uh, a camera that, or video camera that has a low illumination that you can really use at nighttime, you know, there's a lot of them for like $200 uh, with high optical zooms. I mean, you just have to look up in the sky and be patient. You know, you mm -hmm. see an object, you know, you got a camera out there. You know, again, a lot of them against are in the infrared spectrum. So if you have money to spend uh, like four or five hundred dollars to buy a night vision device, that would be your best bet. I will guarantee anybody that starts this that has a bit of patience that has a night vision device. Again, I work. I recommend a Luna Optics or a Yukon Ranger. They're both very good. Uh, one's colored night vision, one's just black and white. Um, again, they're in about four four hundred fifty dollars, and that'll open up the sky if you're patient. 
you will see UFO guaranteed. And I mark my word on that. But sometimes you got to be patient. It may not happen the first three, four hours when you're out there. It might take eight hours in one night for you to actually see something that will blow your mind. But it's, it's being consistent and looking up. You know, if you go once a month and you spend an hour looking at the sky with a camera or without a camera, there's a chance that you probably won't see anything. You got to be consistent. And I think that's just it with the human nature. We don't look up in the sky enough. You know, we're looking right. straight ahead or looking down. Uh, looking up at night, even in the daytime, look at the sky. And more and more people these days are doing that. So that's my first recommendation. And um, I think the second one, of course, is a night vision device or, or a, a really good low illumination You know, that you can use at nighttime. Even in the daytime, people are catching UFOs with a, a plain um, video camcorder, you know, um, you know, seeing something at silver that flashes in the sky and then they zoom in on it. And it's it's a sphere, and it's 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 moving around, uh, zipping around really fast. And you have no explanation. That's probably a UFO. So you can capture things in the daytime, but I prefer the night because they they do show up. And with night vision, they they can't hide from the infrared spectrum. And now I'm going into full spectrum, and as well as I'm I'm investing again in thermal night vision. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of controversy with that. Again, this is more advanced people that want to get into that. I'm going to be adding that to my uh, Skywatchers mobile unit. Um, and again, I'll show you some videos and you'll see why I'm using it coming up in the next couple of months before the rain starts. And you'll see why it's, uh, I think it's going to be a good value to have um, for testing and for trying to figure out what these things are. You know, they're using propulsion that, that you know, that you can pick up with, with thermal imagers. Um, is it a complete different propulsion unit that they're using? Are these orbs, um, you know, very ethereal, are they spiritual? Do they show up in thermal or just infrared spectrum? So there's a lot of the questions and a lot of things that I'm working on and researching. So hopefully I'll have some more answers in the next little while. So Charles, Charles you're doing great work. I just subscribed to your uh, YouTube channel, and I hope that others will as well. It's Charles T. Lamb, which is short for Charles Lamaru, and it's well worth your time, you guys. So uh, look look up his page. He's He's got so many videos here, and, and I'm embarrassed because I wanted to try to keep up with him as he was describing them, but I'd, I'm scrolling through here. I've got a lot of videos <laughs> to watch here, Charles. You've done some great work. Well, you know, and if, if they can't remember my uh, username, because I, I started my YouTube channel way back before I started doing UFOs. It was just to, to look at some, U, you know, some YouTube channels. Sure. And um, go to howtoufo.com, just one word, how to UFO. I'm eventually going to launch a website, um, and it's basically exactly around how to get into uh, filming and, and viewing uh, UFOs. I still haven't had the time to, to launch it, uh, but it will be really interesting stuff. Lot, it's, lot, it's going to be unique um, out there on the web because it, it will be based for people that have never done this before that want to learn. Uh, Fantastic. And, so, how to UFO, and I got a link there right now that goes to my YouTube channel. So, if they remember that, how to UFO.com, then they'll find my YouTube channel. How to UFO. Yeah, very simple. <laughs> Perfect. Well, that's great. I like yourself. I, I kind of got into YouTube a little bit before I started posting videos up there. And so my, my YouTube channel name is a little bit odd, but, um, I, I still encourage folks to, to go to your channel and how to UFO will link back to, uh, Charles Lamaru as well. Charles, thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. I really appreciate it. Well, thanks for the invite again. And it's been a pleasure. Thanks Charles. And You're the man. Yeah. Thank you so much. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to be keep, I will keep watching your, your site and I look, I look forward to, uh, more great captures, man. All right. Oh, well, thanks. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Charles. Keep it up, pal. Thanks, man. Good night. Good night. Always a pleasure talking with Mr. Charles. He is certainly a gentleman. He has got some good work here. I'm seriously, I'm scrolling through this, looking at all of these and, uh, man, I've got a lot of videos to watch here. Yeah. Did you subscribe to my YouTube channel, Michael? Uh, I, I want to no, put, put you on the spot. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh no. you got saved by the bell. Of course I did. Uh, we'll be right back, folks. You, you, you come up in my feed every day. <laughs> <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> is it that time? Are we, uh, are we at the bell? It is that time. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Michael Parker. We're speaking with producer Joe Kieran, and we are going to take a break. Driver 8, we'll be right back on the other side. 
Goodies, truth seekers, paradigm busters, new world order, civil disobedience, freedom fighters, free thinkers, higher mammals, sentient beings, good people of all types. How's it going? My name is Michael Parker. This is hour two of the Electric Pyramid, emanating, vibrating, coming up out of out of the earth into the atmosphere from somewhere in Hollywood, Los Angeles, Southern California, United States of America, planet Earth third stone from the sun and i'm here with my co-producer or the producer joe kiernan and i believe that we have a guest coming on shortly a uh, a new a new host here on the station is that correct joe yeah it's partially correct she's partially. <laughs> she just started hosting a program here at the station but she's been at the station for a little bit okay and i'm trying to uh, get a hold of her right now Right. This is exciting because um, her name is Dory. I've not met Dory yet, um, but uh, we are going to find we out. About, we got about two minutes, buddy. All right, right on. We're going to find out what Dory's about. Hey, you guys, before we get to that, I just want to remind you that everything that Joe and I and everybody at Radio Revolution, uh, Revolution Radio and Freedom Slips, whoa, this, this is volunteer. This is subscriber-based. Yeah, this is passion, man. We're doing it because we love it. We love to get to talk about these topics and to bring you entertainment and hopefully educate you and inform you. And if you appreciate what what we do, uh, we would love for you to kick us down a dollar or two or three. Um, please go to the site and uh, donate some money because, as Joe mentioned to you earlier, you know we 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 have some technical issues that we are trying to address, and um, it'll make you feel good to help us out. So if you can, we would really appreciate that. Our archives for all complete archives of all revolution radio shows, I believe is only $5 a month. Isn't that right, Joe? I believe Michael, I want to check. I believe it's, I believe it might've changed. Oh, okay. Well, regardless, you're getting a ton of I'm sorry data. not knowing that people at home. Now, I think it is $5 a month. I think I could be wrong, but regardless, you're getting every single show. Um, if you want it, uh, for a very low price. So we, we appreciate anything that you guys can do to, to help us out. And we appreciate you listening to us. It makes what we do have a purpose. And, uh, we want to keep doing this because the cool thing about it is getting to bring you guys alternative viewpoints that you're just never, ever going to hear, at least at this point on your major corporate owned media right you, there really may be a t- you really don't learn much you know on no. mainstream media uh, and i even mean about the live broad the the live reporting they're doing you know it's it's usually incorrect right from the get-go yes it's just retold over and over by and sensationalized uh, oh yeah by many different news agencies and uh by yeah. the way, Joe, the only thing that happened today of, of, of any regard besides the NFL is that Joan Rivers died. I mean, if that, that's what you would hear from, from mainstream media. And, and listen, my heart goes out to uh, her family. But come on, folks. There's a lot of – there's like 3,000 troops in the Ukraine right now, okay? 3,000 Russian troops. There is a lot going on in the world. There are people falling over from, from Ebola's. There's a lot of things that are happening. And, um, you know, there's more than, than, than e-channel. Hello, Dory Bar. Welcome to the Electric Pyramid. Hello, Jojo. Yeah, I was so surprised. Thank you for the invite. I appreciate it. Yeah, I get to talk about my show with. I'm great. Me and Justin were just doing the, you know, before the show. (laughs) Of course. Dory, hey, I'm Michael. How are you? Hey, Michael. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. It's a pleasure. Yeah, I love the show. You know that. A friend of mine lives lives on the West Coast. As all of us, yeah. Uh, Well, are are you out here as well? I'm in Palm Springs, hon, yeah. All right, on. Oh, love Palm Springs. Yeah, I'm a desert rat now. I'm, I'm <laughs> an East Coast girl, but I'm a desert rat now. It so. was probably really hot for you today, too, wasn't it? Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Can't wait till September's over. <laughs> we as soon as it's over, it's do- yeah, it's 80 degrees for the rest of the year. I'm cool with that. Right, right. <laughs> you know, we live in hell for four months. We know it. We know exactly what's going on. You see all these people in shorts and stuff in October, November. We're in like you know leather coats, boots. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> we're so used to being like you know 112. So right. Yeah, that's, that's when all like that's uh, ridiculous. Yeah, our snowbirds come into town and take over. Yeah, we have the same thing here. In the Do East you? Coast. Yeah, this is a big snowbird town. Yeah. And uh, they come down in the winters. You know, uh, yeah. they fill the place up for a couple of months, but. 
So where do you live, Michael? Do you live in San Diego? No, I actually live in L.A. Um, oh, you do? In, in the valley, uh, kind of around the Studio City area. Oh, nice. I used to have a place in uh, Glendale. Glendale's great, man. I mean, yeah. listen, I, I love L.A. I love Southern California. I've been here for 20-some-odd years, so I'm originally from Texas. Uh, and w- weirdly enough, I've only been to Palm Springs a couple of times, but I really dig Palm Springs. Yeah, you got to come down during season, man. It's the best time to come down here, definitely. Yeah. Well, when you call it season, what what do you mean by that? Well, it's like October, November, December, January, February, March, April. <laughs> when it's not <laughs> it's like, hot, it's all, Hades. yeah. No, it's not hot at all. Actually, the heat shuts off in October. Everybody comes down for Thanksgiving, Christmas, and then they stay. And then, like, my mom will come down in April. This year, it's going to be early. She's coming down in March. We're going to do some stuff in uh, San Fran because it's on her bucket list. Go figure. Well, you yeah. fly out, and then we're going to drive back, you know, and then we'll come to Palm Springs. I'm like, huh, i got to drive that drive again? I did that when I was 19, man. I'm in my 40s now. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, those windy roads on Route 1. Mile. Yay, <laughs> I can't wait. Your bucket list. Yay. I'm an only child, so there's no one else to fulfill that That is that a long corner. drive, too. Oh, my God. Do you remember doing that? Have you ever done it? No, I've never oh, done hell. it in, in one trip, and, but that's what oh, I was thinking if I had to. No, we'll stop and we'll stay at hotels because, you know, she's like, just don't speed. I'm like, you cannot speed, Ma, on like crooked roads. It's not going to happen. So it's a beautiful trip. She wants to go to the wineries and all that. I said, I'll do it. You know, but I don't want to drive it by herself. So, yeah. So, yeah, I got to help my mom. Wine country. Nothing wrong with that. She loves wine. That's what I have here on the East Coast. I'll just watch her drink it. I mean, we have wineries, but it's just not the same. No, it's beautiful. But they just had the earthquake. So you never know. I'm like, is that bad luck? Sure. Hopefully they'll fix it up by March. So. <laughs> yeah, the, the Napa thing. I mean, I guess they really lost a lot of uh, a lot of money on that deal because I don't remember what yeah. the estimate on the bottles were, but I mean, they that was a serious um, blow to their local economy up there. But don't you think you'd be prepared for it if you're on a ley line? I'm on a ley line. I understand. I was in real estate and a loan officer. I get that. I know I'm on a ley line. You have to sign documents saying you are on a ley line. <laughs> I love the fact that you call it ley lines. I so rarely hear that. I mean, yeah, um, that's when what it is. Yeah. You had to call yeah. it that officially? Yes. Wow. I had, oh, to really? sign, I had to sign a piece of paper saying that there's parts of Palm Springs, imagine this, are in the flood zone. Okay, we're in the desert A, right. but we are in a fishbowl. Mm-hmm. So if you could think of a fishbowl, we're at the bottom of a fishbowl because you have the mountains Don't all worry, around so, us. So then when you guys right. actually call it a ley line, what, what in real estate terms is that defined as? You're in earthquake zone. Okay. You're on um, it. You're on the line. So that means when it starts, no matter where it starts from, if it starts from, Fran, you know, San, well, Fernando Valley or San Bernardino or even Idlewild or whatever else, we're on that line. It goes down to the Salton Sea. That's what they're considering this ley line. You know, so we have to sign documents saying we understand it. And the funny part is we pay for $160 for the stupid report and it says you're not in an earthquake zone. And I kept going, you're making $180 off this, but I just signed a piece of paper that said, I'm agreeing I'm on a ley line. So- well, the, reason, <laughs> the reason I ask is because usually what I've heard the term ley line, um, I, I've heard it you know, from English people or European people, and they were talking about like energy lines or something. So I, I had not heard it in, in Yes, in energy lines, to- but it's also earthquake, you know. Makes sense. But also earthquake fault zone, I guess that's what you could say. That makes sense. Yeah. But yeah. That, well, that they tell you exactly what it is, yeah, that we're on it. Wow. We're definitely right on it. And don't forget, our water here is underground, so it's good for like 100 years. Everybody's like, oh, when the water shuts off, I'm like, we have water underground. But the bad thing about that is it has all the calcium deposits and just deposits in it. It takes you about a half hour to see clear water, let's put it that way. You pour it from have the faucet spent- and you wait. <laughs> yeah. Have you spent any time at Salton Sea? Yes, it's horrible. I um I have never been there. I was I, I I've always been curious about it. And I on NPR today they did uh, they did a story on the whole salt and sea thing and what we may have to do to remediate the situation in in the, the future. The BS that they've been telling you us for oh God, I've been here for over fifteen years now. My mother's right. had a summer home here for thirty. Right. So yeah, we had a house here for thirty years. You figure I was thirteen when they came down, and um, you know they were gonna change it and they're going to clean it out you can't number one it's salt that's what it is it's it's gorgeous if you stay in your car it's it's the most beautiful thing you've ever saw in your life then the sulfur that comes from it is rotten eggs so imagine that travels all the way to palm springs so they had a bubble with the real estate everybody bought houses there like thinking it's prime real estate 
But if you really look at the Salton Sea and go to the main town, it's a ghost town. It looks like, Michael, everybody just got up and said, see ya. It's no, the scariest thing I've ever seen. All the stores from like the 60s and 70s are still there. Some cars are still left and they split. So me and a friend of mine drove to literally the Salton Sea. So we went down this road. We get there. We see all these dead fishes yeah. you know, on top of the water. And then we see these crazy looking people staring at us. I didn't get out of the car. I had everything locked. I go, I'm not getting out. And they're fishing. Wow. Like there's dead fish. I was freaking out. I'm like, it's, uh, it was just freaky. It just freaked me out. It is such a creepy looking place. And I, oh, I don't know. Awful, I, there, yeah. I just had to ask you about it because every time I see pictures of it, I'm like, wow, I've got to go there someday just because it's you just so just weird. The people. the people are out of their minds. Yeah. We stopped at like a little, it wasn't even a 7 Eleven. Yeah, but it was like you knew Slab you were in the City. Twilight Zone. Swear to God. And I'm not afraid of too many things. Really, I'm not. I'm pretty tough. But I just said, let's just get what you got to I don't want to eat anything from here. Yeah, you need I, gas. Let's just get it. Let's get back in the car. We were going on a dirt bike expedition. A friend of mine was racing in a race. I was going to drive dirt bikes after her. I wasn't in the race. I was just doing my dirt bike thing. And all these girls and stuff were all lined up. I said, let's get in the car. I got freaked out. The energy there was crazy. And I'm very mm-hmm. you know, sensitive. You know. And as soon as we pulled up, I just started shaking. My girl was like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, this is not a good place. Let's just get out. They were like soul catchers. That's exactly what I felt. You know, like somebody's going to come in and like catch that. Yeah, I just had this creepy feel, creep out. You, you had feeling. a creepy feeling you were going to be stuck there and yeah, well, the soul one. catchers. You could see the way they look at you, yeah. everything change, what they eat, what they drink. Like you knew that was a whole other world right there. I've heard about. It. I've been to places that I actually got freaked out a few times. That was probably the worst place little, on the planet. Little vortex. Yeah, wow. it, was, it was crazy. Well, now I have to go. I wanted to go. I, go. Just, yes. you know, because exactly what Michael was saying. I see pictures. I hear nice things. I mean, it looks beautiful. I, I'm it sure is, there's really not a whole lot is. to do. No, when you see it, it's absolutely beautiful. But as long as you stay in the car. But then when you see right. the dead fish and then the stench. What? And well, then it, the crazy is that folk. why the car, it really smells that bad? Oh, you have no idea, honey, because I'm in Palm Springs. So you think I'm about 80 miles, yeah. 70 miles from there? The smell, and we know when the sulfur comes in, and they always call it, you know, the Santa Ana winds. I'm sure you guys heard the song. Of course. Santa Ana winds are blowing in, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, well, we get the sulfur. So it's rotten eggs. So as soon as we come out the door, we know it's the salt and the sea. Sure. Did you, so did imagine you go, living there. Did wow. you go to Slab City as well, where the guy put the crazy painted mountain up with the crosses and everything? Probably seen it, because I had to go through there. I went to um, Julian. It was a surprise weekend for me. Mm-hmm. And uh, we had to drive through Salton Sea, go to the back desert to go to Julian. And I think I seen that. But we right. um, uh, raced motorcycles over there in that part. I wasn't close to that mountain, but I probably did see it. I don't remember, but I'm gotcha. sure I seen it. Gotcha. Yeah. Wow. Well, so Dory, you've got a uh, you've got a show on uh, the network now. Yeah, I'm right after Joe. Cool. So, what, what tell us what it's about? Um, it's about energy, you know, and life and what's going on with us and the sun and DNA and changes and it's about everything. Whatever you can think of, that's what I talk about. I think it's about to make people understand what's going on in their bodies right now because everybody's going through such a hard time and when I try to tell everybody, everybody's going through three phases. It's funny, everything happens in threes. We all know that. Mm. So some already did it. I went through it. I went to the sleeping stage, the crying stage, your things change, your money's gone, your business, you know, whatever you went through. You knew the, fight, the first stage was like 2008. You know, or 2000, depends on how old we are. Right, right. And then you start going down the line. And then sometimes a lot of us, our third eye opened or Kundalini, we went through crazy stuff. And then it goes down the line to uh, now people are realizing, now they're getting sick physically, mentally. Yeah. They're starting to realize things. It's hitting them physically. And me, I just lose organs. I take everything mm. in. I'm a psychic, sensitive, intuitive. I was about to ask you if you were clairvoyant. Very, and I take everything personally, but my organs take the hit. Never Dory, fails. I did not know that. Yeah, since I was a baby. Ask my mom. She said, yeah, you're a freak. <laughs> <laughs> How do Are you, you know a water sign? Stuff? Actually, I'm a Taurus. I'm an earth sign. My mother's Perfect. a water sign, and my father is. Um, I'm a Scorpio. Scorpio. My-, my father's a Scorpio. My mother's a Cancer, so I could I- really lose a- you completely. My-, my daughter is a Taurus. I'm a Scorpio with Cancer yep. Rising. I'm Pisces. Perfect. That's perfect. Well, I married we're, my, my first husband with Pisces. Pisces. <laughs> we're water and earth here. We're all in good. We yeah, are, in, we're like, exactly where we're supposed to be right now. Absolutely, I am definitely but, on the cusp. 
a Taurus daughter is probably the best daughter you could have for your sign, for a Scorpio. You know what? You are right. And she's yeah, my the oldest best. daughter. Yeah, yep, awesome. they're the best. They're calm, cool, collective. They know their stuff. They're always intuitive, though. They're probably brought into this plant. They like nice things. That's Depends true. on when she was born, but I'm totally into that. Yeah. So tell like me this. So, awesome. So, 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 so you are psychic. You're clairvoyant. Um, mm-hmm. Man, how long can you stay on the show? <laughs> our show's right after. We gotta, yeah, oh, hey, come right. on, come on to our show. I only just, I, I was just bringing her in for a few minutes. I go, okay. He goes, come on, girl. You want to, yeah, but you can come on to our show. It's, uh, it's all holds barred. There's nothing, you know, we don't really have like special guests, but we are going to have them eventually. That's true. They have so many people that want to come in, you know, that are special guests, but I don't tell ahead of time. I like to just surprise people that like, are really cool, mm-hmm. make everything exciting. And um, come on next. You know, I'm on Studio A. Joe mm-hmm. Joe knows that. Yep. I always call him Jojo. Sorry, because I know he's my it's good. He's my I, fave. Uh, you know, I yeah. For uh, your your test run show. Yeah, but like, come let on. Me, let we me have, ask like, you. Go ahead. Let me ask you this, because I, I um, you mentioned the sun, and you said what's going on with the sun. What just give me the give me a hint. Changes. I'll give you a hint because that's what I'm going to be talking about. But the okay. solar changes are affecting us crazy, yes. and it's supposed to though. This yes. is meant to be for us. It's actually helping and enlightening us to get along with what we have to get along. There's, there's a reason why the sun's doing what it's doing. Mm. But if you notice, anytime something good for us, it's always going to be in the negative. So remember that. Anytime what do you mean they by talk that? negative, like if you hear it on the news or, you know, the sun's having the solar flares and we're going to hell and right. things are bad and you can't be outside and you can't get to, you know, D3 and all that. No, that's not true because actually it's actually helping us. And yes, it's not dying out now, not for a couple million more years. Oh, so love, you I have love to, what you're saying, Dorian. Well, you have to look at it like that because people don't understand that and then they get afraid. And then when they see something happen, they're like, oh, it's the sun, it's hurting me. So you put it in a negative. Everything has to right. be an individual aspect of how you feel or think of something coming to you. But the sun is actually doing a justice to us, not a disservice. There's a difference. People mm-hmm. always think disservice because that's what you're programmed. Hate, uh, hate, hate, hate. You know. I figure. really can't agree with you more. I, yeah, I've been an advocate is, for exactly what you're saying. Uh, yeah. I think the sun is uh, gigantically important, even beyond science terms. I understand Absolutely. vitamin this and that and this, but there's so much more. And well, as we know here where we're talking, there's so much more that, you, that exists that you don't see. It helps uh, raise your kundalini, number one. Mm-hmm. It also helps with your third eye, and it helps with every every illness you could ever think of having. And you're doing it while you're sleeping because it's always around. Remember, it's always 24-7. It doesn't change. Just like there's, the moon, that's artificial. Yes, we all know that. There, but there is a cycle to it. There's an early philosopher, a hermetic philosopher that I really enjoy, and he's from in the 1400s. And he wrote an excellent book on all of this called The Book of the Sun, which I put on my YouTube page. It's pretty, it's pretty good. It's it's about it's just over an hour, and he just he basically explains how uh, the sun gives you the sun gives you everything you will ever have. Right, it, but it's also we're getting blocked on one end with the fear, mm-hmm. and the sun's giving us the beautiful part, and then we're screwed again. Now we're getting sick, and I think these cats need to know you're getting sick for a reason. Yeah, you're so getting sick. You're staying in bed on purpose. You're not going outside. You're, a lot of us are just like staying inside. We're hermits. That's right. There's a change coming, and I'm and I've never liked that. I'm a Taurus. I love to go out. I love doing everything in my business. I was always out. Now it's like, uh-uh. I know it. I can't even go to a grocery store anymore. So if you guys understand the concept of that energy, mm-hmm. that I hear people's pain. I can't pay the bills. I can't do. I can't buy food for my kids. That's what I hear. Can you help yeah. me? And they're like, walk up to me like, I, I got to get out of here. No, put. I'm sorry. God bless you. I don't know what to say at this point. And now I'm starting to learn how to use my energy wisely. Because of the change, I lost the gift for like two years. So I lost it exactly for two years, and I gained it back probably about a year ago. So and you, bigger than better than it was do, before. Do you read for clients or? No, uh, no, i never done okay. that. People okay. just walk up to me. It's usually because they need it. I, no, right. I can't like go to a bar. I don't try to do that. Like my husband uh, does a restaurant business, so I would sit at the bar, wait for him. My friends are bartenders now. I'm having a beer, just waiting for my husband. You know, you're psychic. I know. I'm like, who are you? <laughs> like, I don't <laughs> even know you. And they just need a little help. Sure. And I had to learn how to incorporate that in my life. That just be kind and loving, and you know, stop being a bitch. Because it wasn't I was a bitch. It was because I get so afraid that their energy would come at me so violently that I would physically feel that. So I had to learn how to make my energy work 
with the scenario, what was around me. And I'm learning how to do that. I'm better at it now than I was before. So it's good. It's all good. Well, I know you have to go, but let me just ask this. this I'll give you more time. Go ahead, honey. Yeah. Um, So do you... Do you feel it? Do you hear it? Are you clairaudient or do you just kind of... It depends. Sometimes I hear stuff. Sometimes I know ahead of time. Sometimes I don't. Or gotcha. I'll know something's up. Like I know something's going to happen that day. Mm-hmm. And then now it turns into... I think the worst part of this gift would be negatives. And they're coming in a lot. So that means the ones that we thought were beautiful souls and stuff already turned. They already made their decision pre-soul issues there's nothing wrong with them they're just choosing to be on the negative side and that's their gig that's what they want to do you know i don't look at good and or bad or evil it's all the same to me mm-hmm. my choice is my choice your choice is your choice joe's choice is his choice mm-hmm. but the negatives will come at you very hard and i know i'm doing good when they come at me and it's hard because i take it so personal yeah. and i know to stop doing that because no i'll just start crying because i'm like well what you mean I just do? overall negativity? You just, oh, they'll just, hit you just up. Obvious, oh, they'll talk about you. Just obvious, they'll, ne- yeah, just they're trying to hurt your possibly. name and stuff like that. But they're yeah. taking all the time. They're energy of themselves. I am who I am. You either love me or yep. you don't. That's just the way it is. And that's with all of us. Yep. But I can't say, oh, you have to like me because I'm special. Right. No. You just know when you know you're hooked up with someone and that's it. But when somebody pushes all that negativity out to you, it's happening to all of us. Yeah. And they're like little two faces. Remember when you were little? Yep. You're like, oh, I got burnt. <laughs> Jesus, mm-hmm. you know, damn, I got burnt. I'm never going to get burnt again. Then you got burnt again, you know? Right. Now, it's more the daggers are coming at me, and I laugh, and I don't respond. When I was little, I would respond because I would be so hurt. Right. Being an empath and being a sensitive, I get very hurt. And my feelings would always get hurt. Now, mm-hmm. I don't care anymore. And now I'm like, I pray for them or whatever you have to do to make it right with yourself. But they're doing their job. It's okay that they're here. Like people go, oh, you know, screw this and Illuminati and this and that, you know, these bad things. No, they're here to teach you a lesson. If you do not understand that, you shouldn't be on the planet. We all decided to come down here to agree with this crap and we're dealing with it. And now we're winning seven billion plus. Come on, man. We all decided to come down here and go, you hoo, we're out of school. I'm done. (laughs) And the ones that aren't awake, leave them the hell alone. Why do you people insist upon waking them up? They're not here to wake up. They're here to still do what they do. Go to work every day, watch their football, do their That's stuff, right. eat their pretzels, drink their beer, leave them alone. Mm-hmm. We're here to take over that right now. We're here to lift it up to a next. But the funny part about it all is that, and I'm going to say this on my show, so they'll probably be bored by the time they get to mine, but I'm on a different studio. Maybe they're not hearing now. <laughs> but, <laughs> right. But right? Oh, I could care less. I love Joe. But the thing is, is that so the Illuminati sweet. and all you want to talk about, actually, they know when we get that bright and we wake up because they've been dumbing us down for how many centuries now. Mm. We take them with us. And a lot of people out there don't understand that. Good we point. take them with us. They're pissed. Well, yeah. if I just told you, you know what, Michael? All those things you worked at and you were in control for so long, I'm taking you with me, bitch. And we're going to go to the other level and then you're going to have to go through all that. <laughs> they don't want to do that. And we have to take them with us. It's just part of the nature of coming down here as a human being. We're taking them with us. And it happened thousands of years before us, and it will happen thousands of years after us. But if we rise to the level of humanity that we're supposed to, because we are beings and we live forever, and we know that, you know, this isn't our first rodeo trip here. Nope. We all know this. No, nope. I but know we, I'm we got it. Right, but we got to drag them with us. So now you're going to see the most fear you can ever think in your life. And now people are getting bored. Have you noticed? It's great. I love it. I love waking up. I do. I wake up in the morning like, this is great. Because they're like, what? Ebola, great. Ferguson, oh, wonderful. Oh, that one got, oh, his throat was slit. Well, there's no blood trails, huh? We're not as dumb as we look anymore. Well, because now we're awakening, whether we realize it or not, some of us, they're actually, our energy is actually working. And these babies that are coming in now are perfect. And what they do to these kids is horrific. Yes. And they know what they're getting themselves into, these babies. And they're, some of them are not even ever been reincarnated on this planet. They're coming down to help, and they're getting vaccines and all these diseases and dumbed down. And, you know, I've talked to a few of them. Autism, and they're telling me, we think in spirals, you think linear, and you're teaching us false things, and you're giving us these shots. Right. I want to talk and spirals. And they're doing it. You have to talk to these children. The children are the ones, and it's not autistic. These kids are the brightest, yeah. and they'll always be the weirdest, and that's how they come down here. They speak weird. They kind of, some of them talk like dolphins. I had a lot of kids talk to me as dolphins. They'll come right up to me as dolphins. <laughs> they do that. Really? And I just smile. Oh, I have tenants well, you know, walking by me all the time. And the kid goes, my son loves you. 
can't, kid can't talk. He's three. And he winked at me one day. I said, you little SOB. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're one of those kids. Well, in my, I'm saying it back to him mentally, not out loud. Right, you right. Know? Well, you've got genius. I mean, you've got energy. Oh, he, he would come up to, to me. He was so excited. And he'd be like, Ugh! he just got so excited. I said, I know exactly what you're doing. I said, good luck. God bless you on this trip. You're going to need it. Because the parents always yell at him. Get in the house now. Don't go over there. Don't hit, go here. And he would always kick his ball down to my condo. So I'd have to kick it back. But there's a wall between my condo and his parents. So his parents could never see me. And he would die to come see me because I'd be sitting outside. And he'd come and he'd wink at me and I'd kick the ball back to him and he'd pick it up. He's a little tiny baby, tiny, tiny, tiny. But this little, I tell you, he's adorable thing. And he would see me come out of my car and he would get so excited. He would put his fists in the air. You know when somebody's like mm-hmm. so excited and they moved. He's, but, he was exuberated. Yes. And then we had another one upstairs and he would go, what's that? What's that? Same thing. I have a fire hose right outside. I said, you know what that is. I'm not your father. Stop BSing me. So he goes, it's a fire hose. This kid finally says, it. I know he's autistic. And I go, perfect. The father comes around the corner. He goes, with that, with that, with that, daddy starts talking totally opposite. I said, priceless. <laughs> this kid spoke perfect English to me one second and then started talking different with the father. And I've been doing this to kids. God, I'm 49 now. So I've been doing this to children since probably I was 19. I do it to all my God children. Who were you? What were you? I don't want to discuss it with you this present moment in time. That was my godchild, Nikki. I said, where'd you get that vocabulary? You're three. You're not even potty trained yet. Mm. And then she'd be like, oh, Mickey. And they blah, blah. And they point and stuff. I'm like, I heard what you said. And if I had a cell phone back then, I would have played record. So that everybody else could hear what you said. And then eventually my best friend, who was the, you know, the mother of the child that I babysat twice a week, said, you're never going to believe it. You're right. She is my great-great-grandmother. She told us in a car ride, in her car seat. But I opened her up to that. I said, don't ever take it away from these kids. We take it away. We dumb them down. Right. We hurt them. Because we put them in the society of dumbing down. It's because it's how we were programmed, you know? Yes. And they're here to help us. It's like, people, don't ever underestimate the strength of a child. You have no idea what they're here for. And wave at them, especially the ones that are autistic. Smile at them. Like, you know you're doing a good job. Just keep it up. You know you came down there to get tortured. Just keep it up. You're doing a great thing. And things are changing, but the children are the ones. And if you have children, all of you do, pay attention to your kids. You'd be amazed what you'll learn. Amazed. I agree. Yeah, it's incredible, isn't it? I get so it, excited. It's, it's Sorry. even more incredible how much of my words are coming out of your mouth right now. <laughs> isn't that funny? Well, well There's we just very few there. people yeah. that re- actually see things enough to uh, speak with such a surety that way, that's all. And I appreciate. I, 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 I tremendously it, yeah. appreciate it. I am, am no, so grateful to find out this about you. I don't know how I didn't know this. I think Dory's going to have a great, great radio show. She oh, does, no doubt about yeah. it. No, it just started. It's been a couple of weeks. I mean, um, but we're insisted, so I have to listen because she's <laughs> like the dad mom to me. So and to JoJo, so obviously we're in this together. And then well, Justin you- Time is a dear friend of mine, so it works out. Perfect. Well, you just have so much energy. I, I, oh, I, I think you're going to be a fantastic host. Well, thank you. I just get so nervous before our show, and that Justin's like, you know, because we talk ahead. I do. I get so nervous. I shake, and people write into me, right? Talk about this and talk about that, and I get so nervous. I'm like, I don't know why. I'm, after all these years, you think I wouldn't be nervous, you know? But I get nervous. Nervous this is, is good. Yeah, it is. I get that. You know, it means like, you care. Yes, yeah, I pray and I yeah. say you make it the best it could be. You know, may may we be blessed. You know, yeah, it, sh- it, it shows be- you care because you're you you want it to be packaged right. You wanna you wanna do real good. Yeah, it's not like a, you know a nine to five and it's not written down one to ten or A to Z. It is what it is. Whatever people are feeling and they need help, that's where I go to, and I'll go right to it. It's like I zoom into it. Wow, you know, that need is help fantastic. with this, need help with that. And that's how the show goes. So it's always up in the air. It's never it's never planned. I have stuff written down, seventeen pages, automatic writer. <laughs> seventeen pages of what people need to hear. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. And it's always what some people need. Whoever's gonna be listening tonight, it's always pre planned, you know that. Who's gonna listen to our shows and stuff? Everything's already rewritten, you know? It's so always you do, you do automatic writing as well and, and Yeah, I've been automatic writing for about twenty five years, yeah. Wow. Since I was a baby. I was little, yeah. It's interesting because are are you an artist as well? 
No, I couldn't draw to save my life. Okay. Well, the, the only yeah, reason, no, no, musician, no. yeah, and stuff like that. I was a musician, but yeah, not, of course you I, were. But that's, that's what I'm getting. Artist that's way, I'm, yeah. Right. That's what I'm getting at because it's Joe. We talk about art and music and things like this, and it never surprises me when you find out that people who are artistic in some fashion, whether it be music, whether it be writing, whether it be art or some other media, they are the people who get ideas before other people get ideas. Because if you're an artist, you're already channeling. When you're creating whatever it is you create in whatever form you create it, you're already kind of channeling ideas you don't even know from where. So it never surprises me when I see other musicians or artists, they get a lot of the ideas that we are discussing right now far before your typical man in the street. I'd have to agree with that 100%. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. I think we signed up for this, though. You know that, right? I well, agree. Your daughter signed up I to would be agree with you. That. Your kids signed yeah. up to be with you, Joe. Yeah. Well, these are probably like our great-great-grandparents. Oh, I said to my mother, I never came here before. This place sucks. I was two. <laughs> and she'll say it to the same. She goes, where do you get this information? Right. And I would say to her, why am I here? I don't believe I came down here. And she goes, why did you? I would point. I said, this is why they made me come here. And she's like, who's they? I said, I don't know, but I had to come here and take care of you. You're going to be a single parent. My mom was married at the time. And she goes, I'm not going to be a single parent, honey. Don't worry. I said, oh, yes, you are. Sure enough, my mom was divorced like a month later. <laughs> wow. I said, see, single parent. Mm-hmm. And I always talked to my grandparents. They raised me. They took me away from nannies when I was young. My grandpa was like, she's not living like this. And he protected me. He said, you have to go on and do good things. Do good things with your life, you know. So I think it all works out. It does. Yeah. Weird. You know, I had a great life. I can't say that I didn't. I mean, a lot of crap happened, but, but now uh, I look but, back at it, yeah. But in your opinion now, do you feel that – let me, let me just change it. Like for myself, in, in retrospect – Everything that happened to me was preparing me for right now. You know, oh, uh, yes, everything yeah. I've done was, you know, uh, completely uh, Pre-cog, all yeah. learning experiences, all preparation. And, you know, there's a, a lesson in every mistake, you know, but but you have to pay attention to it. You know, if you if you don't if you don't recognize the mistake, you'll never this mistake is a gift. And for you to yeah, get here and exactly. say that now you passed. Exactly. But you, you know, you're still bitching it. with the pity party. I've had many pity parties. I don't know about you guys. You know, you cry all by yourself. Oh, poor me. You, know, oh, you yeah. get a pity party crap. And then you get like yeah. slapped upside the face going, relax, man. It's just the game. If you're not playing the game, you're not living. Live the game. Girl, I, I'm cancer rising. You know I've had some pity parties. I mean, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> you're like my mom, definitely. She's such a, it, she's such a crap. Totally hides in her shell. Yeah, she cries. I'm like, oh, please. It happens get over sometimes. it. She's yeah. like, you're just so impersonal. You don't care. I'm like, out of all people, I don't care because I, I think I was acting as her mom always. Do you know what I mean? Oh wow. So I kind of well, like were. bitch slap her. Yeah, I do. I feel so bad though. I do. I love her so much, but it's like now she was so service to self at one time. She made a ton of money. She did it. She finally made it, and now she's so service to me and others, which is so nice to see. She goes, I wouldn't have done that if it wasn't for you. I'm like, well, thank you. That's so nice. I fed a dog on the street. If it wasn't for you, I would never do that. Or feed the poor or give to people or smile. I said, well, why not? It's not going to kill you, man. It doesn't cost you anything. <laughs> why not just be nice? you know? And now that she's retired, she's following the way. So if it's one or two people I could do that for, that's mm. great. I didn't mean to. It just happened kind of thing. Mm. you know. But it works. And to hear stuff like that is really cool that you change someone's way of or their perspective or the way they think it's about fantastic them. isn't it i mean oh, not even awesome in an thing, egotistical yeah. way it, almost proud like uh job completed as if you were supposed to oh right? absolutely um, i'm like so honored and uh, I, don't I don't know much about reading the charts the charts are actually i really don't know much about um astrology astrology altogether except on the the science end um I, however, about a, a little over a month ago, I came to the realization that I need to learn it um, for what I read. You know, um, a, a lot of these things, you know, it, it's always helped me very good knowing a, a, a wide variety of the information. Whereas when I'm reading these old things, I could recognize m- mistakes or recognize, say, hey, you know, that's. We, you know, we're we're told something different today, and um, and I am in a time period where there's a lot of this going on. And Michael, you know, I sent you a couple yes. birth charts that were 
We're, well, absolutely. We're oldies. With your, with your interests, um, I think it would behoove you to learn astrology. Listen, I can't do the I math the behind astrology. You know? I, 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 I can't do the math behind astrology, but if someone tells me their birthday and all that, you know, I can get on the computer and I can, yeah. I can drop a chart. And listen, I am no astrologer. I know just enough to um, know a few things, but I, 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 I'm very curious about the art. And um, I do try to get people's information on the sly a lot of times just because like, okay, you've got a new boss or you got a new girlfriend or you made a new friend or you're in a band or you're in a, you know, it just, listen, I, I don't, I don't live by it, but if I can get any additional information that I think can help me in dealing with a person to a positive extent, um, I'll take it. I'm with you. I studied so, uh, it when I was little. I'm not really good at it, but I studied books. Linda Goodman, that's why I started yes. out. I think I was like 12 or 11 when I read that. Love Science. My Linda mom Goodman. had it in the house. Yep. I read it every single book she had. She died of a broken heart. It made my heart break. I cried. By that time, she was dead. But my mother had all these books. Edgar Casey I studied when I was like 10. Mm-hmm. My mother hooked me up to Art Bell when I was a baby. I was young. Yep. And I remember, you got to listen to this radio show. I was like, nobody listens to that, Mom. We're all partying. We're 13, you know? Nope. Right. <laughs> And then she became a um, yeah. She was a hypnosis. She did hip, you know. She was a hypnotist. Your mother? Yeah, so that, mm-hmm, my mom studied hypnotism and all that. I'm like oh god. So she did. She went to school for it. She could have been a great one too. And she goes, I just want to know who you were in another lifetime. I go, that's you it. Know, that was your whole mission, you know. Hey, Dory, have you ever been hypnotized? Oh yeah. I, yep. Listen, I've been hypnotized, um, and I had some hypnotherapy uh, that I went to by two different people. But um, I guess the weird thing to me about hypnosis is that I've never – maybe I wouldn't let myself uh, relax enough, but I never felt like it was the hypnosis that I thought it was going to be. I always felt like I was still a little bit in control. Well, it depends. I was easy to go under. Okay. And I don't like someone else taking control of it, but you have to go to super right. SSC, super subconscious. Mm-hmm. So that's when you start talking about, you know, ETs and all that, you know, because we all are basically. We're all from certain places. So. Right. Well, and that's the, only reason I bring that, weird. the only reason I bring that up is I was just curious about it because, um, you know, you, you see hypnosis on television where they the people are completely – at the, at the uh, bid of, of someone else. But for me, and I, I guess I'm kind of a control freak. So uh, I, whether it's quitting smoking or getting over a particular issue or a fear, I don't know. I, um, I was always curious about it. I, but I never felt like I completely succumbed to it, um, which I was kind of a little bit disappointed in, but, but who knows, Scorpio. maybe, maybe I was under and didn't, and didn't well, you're realize it. Oh yeah. You control a lot of things, Scorpio, <laughs> especially control a lot of stuff. You're right. You know. You're right. No, they do. I know Alaska. My father's a Scorpio, so he's in the mafia. Yeah, he controls a lot of things, so I totally understand the concept. Total opposite. Like, if you saw my parents, you'd be like, wow, where did she come from? You wouldn't understand the background, but you're like, wow, that's pretty cool. I went with it. But it was like, this is who I picked. You know I was making fun when I was up there, wherever I was, going, this is perfect. Mafia, mother, this is per- Everything worked out perfect. Well, I Italian, totally get- Irish. I totally in- get the mafia thing, man. It's like life yeah. or death. I get it. It's... um. When people talk about Scorpios being surgeons or being criminologists or being judges or being in the mafia or something like that, I totally get it, man. I, I understand how those kind of severe – not even severe, but, but serious issues – yeah, we're Scorpios. We, that's, that's our stuff. Oh, my father didn't take any credit. He's deceased now. That's the only reason why I could talk about it. But right. even when I was younger, I mean, I, I could have first class anything. I never took advantage. And then when my dad was murdered, um, I got like first class, everything back east. And I was so angry. I'm like, don't you just love me for me? What does he have to do with anything? Well, you know, you have clout. I said, I have nothing. Not me. Whatever he did, he did. I'm mm-hmm. not proud or upset or anything about it. It's his life. I don't, you know. Right. Mm-hmm. But they treated you different. And when they found out my real name, well, why didn't you say your real name? I'm like, well, that's why I didn't say my real name. Perfect example. Yeah. I won't go to the house. I was so scared. Yeah, it was weird. Times changed for me. It was, I was 21 when my father passed away. So it was a freaky time. And yeah, I was killed. Yeah. And CIA following you and stuff. I mean, I had one of those lives, you know. Oh, I'd knock on their wow. window, leave me alone, stop following me. Yeah. Plus, I'm intuitive, so that didn't, you know. Yeah. So, hurt, many, but, so many questions. Yeah, I it's have crazy for you, stuff. Story, oh. Yes. Like I said, you guys are more than welcome. I have to Thank go. You. I have to talk to my boy. Yep. Yeah, you got to go. He's writing to me. He's like, 
You know, you go, breathe, breathe. So, like, I get so excited. Just in time was not writing to me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. Jory, to me, you've you know got that. you have got awesome energy, and I oh, think uh, your show's going to be fantastic. Take yep. a break. Go make some coffee. Or do something to get a cocktail. That's why I was so want. happy when Doris said hang. she would come and right join us for a few minutes. I I knew uh, the two of you would uh, the, the energy would be great for making good programming. Absolutely, I, I love Scorpios too. So uh, that's you know. And then maybe uh, Dory, you get going and um, yeah, come on during the break. You I'll know, save you, my know the, you know the gig. You know how it yep. goes. You're, yep. I, I, I just hours, need a minute so. right after the show, but I'll, go relax. Yeah, I'll drop you a line. Okay, babe. Thank you, thank folks. You, darling. Thank you so much for having me. Take care, and I hope to talk to you soon, Michael. All Bye, right. honey. Bye, right. Jojo. Bye. Bye. We were just joined by Miss Dory Barr, a host here at uh, FreedomSlips dot com. Her show is named Up in the Air, and it is in Studio A uh, immediately after this program. So, uh, which would be if you were in uh, Los Angeles Pacific time. It would be 11 p.m. Uh, this is correct. If you are in East Coast time like myself, it'll be 2 a.m. Uh, so it's pretty early here. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Kiernan, I do not know how you do it, man, because uh, holy cow, it's like 1043 and, and me being dad here. Like I'm already like winding down and, and you are still up at, you know, what, 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 what did we just say this was? 243 yeah, or something to you? Yeah, it's 143 for me. Oh, my God. And, and – well, I have to. I will be in my car driving my oldest kid to school in five hours Holy at six forty-five. So you are unbelievable. But five I, five hours is my norm. That's my normal sleep. Five hours. That's my norm. You know, like yeah. um, six is six is fantastic. If if I get a full six hours, like straight. Mm-hmm. Um, but anything beyond six, like if I, if for whatever reason I sleep seven or eight hours, um, it, I don't want to say it has a reverse effect. Like I, my body does feel recharged. You know, it does feel yeah. uh, like it, 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 it has more energy saved up. However, um, I don't have the motivation. Got it. You, you know, so like, yeah, I feel good, but it's, no, I don't want to do that. Or no, I don't want to run that. Well, actually, I don't run anywhere. Uh, you know what I mean. Um, right. I would rather just uh, just take it easy. Well, you're lucky because um, I'll be honest, I have severe sleep apnea. So it's like mm-hmm. even if I get eight hours of sleep, I feel like crap. And um, that's something that I'm dealing with right now. But um I, I admire your energy because I mean you are going all the time, and uh, you're right that that, that I woman Dory didn't have to sleep because I'm gonna I'm not I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you, the four, the five hours I sleep a night, yep, I have I have things I would like to do for those five hours, sure, you know? and um, and I I'm not, I don't even say that greedily like you you know me Mike I like to learn you know yes. I wish I had another four or five hours a day to read books. Yeah. I wish I did. Absolutely. Um, but I. But you know how it goes is you know we all have that time. But if I were to give you four hours a week, uh, if, you know, let's say five to ten hours, ten hours a week. If I were to give you ten hours a week, the average person uh, for reading, uh, as time goes on, you will either not be reading or. You know that time will be cut down. You'll, you sure. know, other things will come up, and you won't be able to uh, stick with it. And that's where we are right now. You know, everyone used to have time to learn, and I don't mean just go read a book like uh, a a good book that's a good book. And yeah, all reading, in my opinion, is good. Uh, all reading out loud is good. I encourage yes. my children to read out loud because it's it's good for confidence. Um, most kids, when they when they have to read out loud, well, the few times that they actually do it are in front of their peers, and usually at an adolescent age where that's right you're uncomfortable either way. Yes, um, I encourage my children to read out loud. Uh, of course, when they can, if they're both sitting at the same table, uh, it's not going to work so good. But I encourage to uh, read out loud. Yes, good stories are good stories, and uh, but. 
You know, it, it's not the story that I look for in a book. Uh, you look for a good writer and who uh, will give it to you straight. Uh, I like fact books. I'm not too much of a story book guy, uh, but uh, only because I just don't have the time. Agreed. But, you know, I, I like the, the history books, the old ones. Uh, I don't mean history like just an old encyclopedia. I like going back to original texts and uh, original writers and seeing what they wrote. And then if I don't know of these writers, you look into the writers and you look at their mm -hmm. character and their other body of work. And, and then you, you end up learning so much, you know, when you could just pick out a, a simple instance from uh, antiquity and just go look it up as if you have to write the encyc encyclopedia article for that. Just Which, student school, you know, it's, don't think of it as a report though, because that would mean someone else is making you do it. Sure. Find something you like. And, and, and you know what, even if it's something really small, like a, a battle that happened in one day, try to be an expert on that. You know, just, you, you'd be amazed at what you learn and learn of yourself in order to do this again and better as we go. Agreed. And, you know, you were asking earlier if I was to subscribe to your YouTube channel, which, which I am. I was just um, I know. But what I was going to say is when you are reading the books, the texts that, that you've been doing recently, yeah. I've been listening to some of that. And exactly. I think you do a wonderful job at that. Your voice and your, your pacing and your phrasing is really good. And Thank you, so um, you know what? I'm, I'm, um, I am working on that. You know, that, that's what I'm trying to improve on. And it's so interesting. Um, I, I love life so much and learning because, it, you know, Michael, my life is constant learning. You know, I yes. can't stay. The reason I do 10 different, it seems like I do 10, I have 10 different jobs is because I can't do just one and I can't do one forever. I understand. Um, I have a mind for the arts, but yet you're really not going to make a lot of money in arts. That's right. Uh, I do this, you know, I, I own a construction company to pay the bills and then all of my art and, um, and other science history research, you know, those things are usually done on strictly passion and, you know, sometimes, uh, just as a photographer loves taking photographs and looking at his images and, and perfecting the craft, but yet he doesn't, he, he might not always have a patron. He might not have a client. This is true. You know, so you, you still have to continue to work on these things. And uh, two, three months ago, let's say, um, if you said, Joe, uh, why don't you uh, read this book you're looking for? So you have it in audio and maybe you could put it on Facebook. I would say, you know, yes, Michael, that's probably a good idea. However, I don't like reading out loud and recording. Or, or, you know, uh, knowing it's going to be on the Internet. You know, I said, uh, for the most part, I'm a quiet guy. You know, I'm, I really keep to myself throughout the average day. And it's, I, sometimes people who know me joke around that it's incredible I could host a radio show and, and talk for two hours if need be. Because there's some weeks I talk two hours total the whole week. I hear you. <laughs> I, but, I know. You know uh, but, you know, I, I, I started recording them, as you know, these books, because I wanted to hear them. I like to hear when I'm driving, when I'm working, if I'm building something in my garage, if I'm working. I don't watch TV. You know, if, if there were shows on TV teaching me philosophy, understandings, and, and just uh, improvement, self-improvement, uh, you know, I would be all over it. But unfortunately... The shows that are on television, for the most part, are, you know, strictly for entertainment. Strictly. Yes. Escapism. But, absolutely. And so, uh, when I started reading it, reading these books, I said, you know, um, I'm going to try to make this a little better myself. And I, want, I was working on the timing and trying to keep my voice in the same tone mm -hmm. without sounding too monotone. But I was trying to work on the timing, but um, uh, long story short, I'm working really hard on it. And, uh, and, and, but that's how I, I look at everything. I don't just do something because I want to do it. 
you know um I like to think it all through and I definitely am not a perfectionist. However, I understand that seeking perfection is excellent. And it yes. doesn't mean in everything. And it doesn't mean you have to be the smart guy in the room about it all comes down to like, know yourself. You know, if someone says, you know, every time uh, you, you know, every time I see you, you're, your your elbow moves like you have a nervous twitch in your elbow like you like you like chicken wing and and if you were to say like no i don't and they say yeah you do and, and you know what if you do and you were unaware of it that's about as in philosophy that's about as big as of a shame you could get that someone possibly even a random person is going to be able to teach you something about yourself if you are unaware of yourself, how can you improve anything? Agreed. If, you, if you're not even acknowledging your own faults. And I mean, it's, we could get into it a whole other time, but you know, that's even like when you tell someone, hey, you know, I don't want to interrupt and I hope you don't mind. But, you know, if you um, start this lawnmower, let's say lawnmower, you start this lawnmower this way. It'll work perfect for you, you know, because I've done it so many times. I understand that's that's the best way. And and that other person say, well, I like doing it this way, <laughs> even though that person might know, you know, they just saw what happened and they might say, yeah, that guy's way is better. But I can't let him know he's smarter. That's right. Where you know what, buddy, the other guy knows he's smarter and he was politely trying to tell you that. It might be more beneficial for you this way because it's worked for me for so long. But I've got to put my stamp on it, and that's why that's why I've got to do it completely right. different. I have to and do fail it. at it, right? No, and you know what? No matter if it's wrong, if you're going to break it, if it takes ten hours longer, uh, my goodness gracious! If you can't even get out of your own way, yes, um, I can't. I can't speak about much else beyond that. <laughs> Uh, but know thyself is, you know, you got to know yourself, but it comes down to everything. Like, okay, you, you have, th you know, two, three jobs and you have the, this house and, and these really nice cars and, and you got the best clothes and, you know, you got the, the, every, the first phone, when a, a brand new phones come out, you got it. Brand new TV comes out. You got it first. Um, you're constantly chasing your own self unhappiness in, in this sense. Through acquisitions. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, who's not uh, satisfied with what they have today won't be satisfied with what they have tomorrow. It's an, That's right. It's an endless void. And I don't even like saying void because it's not a void because it is a complete decision. It's not something we have no decision over. It is a complete decision for you to ignore truth. And, and people say they don't ignore truth. But take a look at yourselves, people. I guarantee you do it every single day. Anytime you do something because it's just the way you like to do it, well, that's fine. That's fine. I'm not judging you. However, it doesn't mean it's the right way. It doesn't mean it's the most efficient. Uh, you're just you're just doing that because for you, it's less of a problem mentally. Well, that's what they've chosen to believe, and, and a lot of our society is predicated upon that, mm -hmm. and um, marketing oh, and, yeah. and media mm -hmm. know this, and this is why they're going to appeal to you in certain ways, either right. through um, you're not enough, so you'll want. need this, right. or we'll, we'll need you to be in this war, so we're going to need to scare you, or they, they are going to manipulate you in whatever fashion they think is going to be the best way to get you to draw the same occlusion, conclusion that they want you to have. And they already know that you're probably going to draw a certain conclusion anyway, which gets back to your point, which is oftentimes you are ignoring truth. Right. I mean, it's what it comes down to every day, every day. Um, it, it is our own self problems. And, uh, and many have said before, and on our shows, Dr. Miller said before, you know, you just have to just worry about yourself. That's Take right. care of yourself. You don't have to think to yourself. You don't have to say, okay, uh, I understand this is the right way. And you know what? For the first time, I'm going to be able to give examples to basically, quote, quote, uh, prove this. You know, let's say using Euclidean geometry, you can basically prove anything. 
Uh, but you have to just don't worry about everyone else. Don't worry why this person's doing that. He's going to ruin everything. He's going to tear everything down. He's worry about yourself. That's right. Worry about yourself. And even if you have to tell yourself, even if your ego is the problem, tell yourself you're doing it because you want everyone to be like you. Whatever it takes. But, but it, you're going to have to take care of yourself first. You're going to have to clear your mind and, uh, and realize all these things that we chase after in life are the things that bring you the sorrows. Okay? Besides losing your loved ones, uh, or, you know, these circumstances, uh, health and death, uh, worry beyond, worry outside of your body. Okay? You have no control over that with other people. However, uh, everything else does apply. Uh, hmm. Sorry, Michael. No, I, no, I, no, I'm listening. No, and, I, uh, you'd hear you, uh, it's, um, <sighs> You're a smart man, Joe Kieran. Well, I, I was just looking at the clock here. I just, I just wanted to get into this here, but it won't give us any time to even say goodbye. We'll have to <laughs> talk another time, but... I have right. an appreciation, and I wish I wish I can show people what I see with my eyes. But well, you are that's doing. That's why I study. You are doing it, and back to our my original point. When you read those books, you sound beautiful at it. So, so keep doing it, and you're sharing something that you love, you and people pick up on that. My friend, thank you very much, Michael. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Michael Parker. This is the Electric Pyramid. We've been speaking to Joe Kiernan. We spoke with Dory earlier, who is going to be on right after this. We sh- we spoke with.